Good afternoon. I am Lillian Merja. Today is the fifth Sunday of Easter. At this time, if you have a cell phone, please silence it or turn it off. If during the liturgy children need to use the restroom, we ask that they be accompanied by an adult. We extend a warm welcome to those of you who are visitors. The celebrant for this Mass will be Father Kelly. In this gathering, we have been asked to remember Rick Bouchard. Only one collection is taken up during Mass. Please place both your offertory donation and your donation for evangelization in this single collection. Please use second collection envelopes found at the entrances for any check or cash donation made to the second collection. Let us now take these final moments to prepare ourselves to receive Jesus in the Eucharist and pray together our parish mission prayer. Through your Son, Almighty Father, we have received the mission to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them. Help each and every one of us at St. Patrick's Parish to go, make, baptize, and teach so that each person that we meet will fall in love with you and seek your love in the sacraments through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good afternoon. <clears throat> Let us now journey to worship by praising God with our opening hymn, number 557, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven, number 557. Please stand. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven, to his feet thy tribute bring. Ransomed, healed, restored, forgiven, evermore his praises sing. Alleluia, alleluia, praise the everlasting King. Praise him for his grace and favor to his children in distress. Praise him still the same as ever, slow to join and swift to bless. Alleluia, alleluia, glorious in his faithfulness. Father, like he tends and spares us, well our feeble frame he knows. In his hands he gently bears us, Rescues us from all our foes. Alleluia, alleluia, widely yet his mercy flows. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I pray that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. With your spirit. My dear friends, we gather here this afternoon as God's family on this fifth weekend after Easter. And as we place ourselves in the presence of the Lord, I want we just pause for a few moments, we can recall to mind our sins and seek the Lord's forgiveness. <coughs> For Jesus, you were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you went to seat for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for 
your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you Let us pray, Almighty ever-living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you were pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to join the disciples, but they were all afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. Then Barnabas took charge of him and brought him to the apostles, and he reported to them how he had seen the Lord and that he had spoken to him and how in Damascus he had spoken out boldly in the name of Jesus. He moved about freely with them in Jerusalem and spoke out boldly in the name of the Lord. He also spoke and debated with the Hellenists, but they tried to kill him. And when the brothers learned of this, they took him down to Caesarea and sent him on his way to Tarsus. The church throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria was at peace. It was being built up and walked in the fear of the Lord. And with the consolation of the Holy Spirit, it grew in numbers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to the Lord, all the 
the families of the nations shall bow down before him. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your to the dust. I will praise you, Lord, in the assembly of your people. And to him my soul shall live, my descendants shall serve him. Let the coming generation be told of the to a people yet to be born the justice he has shown I will praise you Lord in the assembly of your people A reading from the letter of St. John. Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in deed and truth. Now this is how we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him in whatever our hearts condemn. For God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, If our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask, because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another just as he commanded us. Those who keep his commandments remain in him, and he in them. And the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit he gave us. The word of the Lord. Friends, the Lord be with you. (laughs) Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Jesus said to his disciples, I am the true vine, my Father is the vine grower. He takes away every branch in me that does not bear fruit, and every one that does he prunes, so that it bears more fruit. You are already pruned because of the word that I spoke to you. Remain in me as I remain in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit on its own unless it remains on the vine, so neither can you unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever remains in me and I in him will bear much fruit, because without me you can do nothing. Anyone who does not remain in me will be thrown out like a branch and wither. People gather them and throw them into a fire, and they will be burned. If you remain in me, my words remain in you. 
Ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. By this is my Father glorified, that you bear much fruit, become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends, first of all, this weekend, uh, you probably noticed as you went into your pews, uh, the information about the uh, New Hampshire Catholic Appeal, the future of our faith, and this is the second year that we are doing this. Uh, this, uh, I just want to say so, uh, something very quickly about this before I get into the theme of my homily. And uh, the future, this particular appeal is designed to strengthen our parishes and the essential ministries of our parishes. As you probably realize, the appeal has replaced six of the second collections that have been conducted every year. And we do this in order to reduce the number of times we ask our parishioners to support church causes and the initiatives as well and it replaces the Catholic Charity New Hampshire in Pew collection, which is held yearly in our parishes, and the Parable Magazine Drive. Now, this year, the goal for uh, this parish is $54,308. Every dollar that our parish raises over the goal for example, we raise more than fifty-four thousand uh, dollars. It will be rebated back to the parish. On the other hand, if we don't raise that amount, we are assessed for the amount that we did not raise. Uh, this appeal will help to fund our shared ministries, which includes community service of Catholic charities. Parable Magazine, Formation of Seminarians, Care for Our Retired Priests, so therefore be very generous, um, Catholic Education, Faith Formation, and so many more things. Uh, this week, you should receive a mailing from the bishop asking you to support the New Hampshire Catholic Appeal. Please take a moment to review it and ask, pray to God, what you can give and what God is calling you to do. Uh, last year, we were short over $10,000, and unfortunately, this did come out of the operating budget. And so, uh, please be as generous as possible, and... Uh, and at the end of Mass, I will lead you in the prayer card, and we can pray for the success of the appeal. But I will do that at the end of Mass. Uh, today, as we gather on this fifth Sunday after Easter, it's interesting, just the other day, I happened to be reading on Catholic News about a number of people who came into the church at the Easter Vigil at various parishes throughout the country, people who went through the RCIA process. And interestingly enough, this year, 2024, the number of converts into the Catholic faith continued for the third year in a row to increase. For example, there were more people in 2024 than in 2023, more people in 2023 and 2022, and for the, this goes on for the past three years. And I think it's interesting to note that uh, in this day and age, the people continue 
to search for the truth, and people continue to find it in the Catholic Church. The numbers are there. People continue to search out and find the truth in the church. And reading some of the, the backgrounds of a few of the people who came into the church, they are varied, uh, to say the least. Interestingly enough, I, one of the people who came into the church, I think it was down in, I think it was in Massachusetts, interestingly, uh, this woman was a former porn star. Well, she came into the church, wonderful. She went on a, uh, happened to make a, a trip to Europe, went to Assisi, had a very strong conversion experience at Assisi, went to Rome, then came back and, and uh, looked up an RCIA process, went through the process and came into the church. And she said, and I quote, God's forgiveness and mercy are real. God's forgiveness and mercy are real. Hopefully, she will continue on and that this is not just a passing thing. People will continue and remain in the faith for the rest of their lives. And of course, this is what we're all called to do, isn't it? To remain with the church both during times of joy and happiness and in times of difficulty as well. Some people who do come into the church as converts, some of them don't last. Many people who are baptized as infants, as we all know, don't last. I remember one time last summer, I was with some friends of mine and uh, we went to uh, one of the Nashua Pride uh, baseball games and I was sitting there with my friends and there was this couple who waved to me and came over, Father Kelly, how you doing? I recognized them and we started the chat and uh, this particular couple, I received them into the church oh, probably about 10 years ago when I was pastor at St. Christopher's. And I, we were chatting and I asked them and they said to me, oh, Father, we're not going to Mass like we should. And get caught up in different things and they've just sort of stopped going to Mass. I got to admit, I was disappointed to hear this. And I gave them some, some encouragement. Well, come on, get back to Mass. You need this and so on and so forth. Whether or not they are doing this or not, I don't know, but Yes, yeah, some people who do come into the church, uh, their conversion experience doesn't last all that long. Pray for all people. Pray for all people. Now, the reason I mention all of this today is because, in a sense, it goes back to today's first reading, taken from the Acts of the Apostles. And, interestingly enough, we... Listen to today's first reading, and what does it say? Well, it mentions about this man named Saul. Later became Paul, as we know. And it also mentions about that the people were skeptical about his conversion. Why were they skeptical? Well, he was a persecutor of Christians, wasn't he? So goes to show, yes, they were skeptical about him. In fact, the reading said that people were afraid of him, not believing that he was a disciple. But then Barnabas took him under his wing, and then Barnabas led him to the other disciples. This is what it says in today's first reading, doesn't it? It says that Paul spoke free, and he led them to the other disciples. Paul spoke freely to the disciples about Jesus. 
and they believed in him. He spoke to the Hellenists, but they didn't believe him. In fact, they tried to kill him. And what did the disciples do? Well, they sort of hustled Paul out of the area for his own safety. They brought him down to Caesarea, and they sent him on his way to Tarsus. You know, for your own safety, let's get out of here. He went to Tarsus, and of course, the rest is history. And then he went on for the rest of his life, going around to the then known world, bringing thousands and thousands of people into the church, ending up in Rome, where he was martyred. Now, during all of this, what was it that kept Paul going? Well, it was his belief in Jesus, wasn't it? His belief in the sacramental presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. This is what kept him going. And this is so important. As Paul was rooted in Jesus, same thing with us. Remain rooted in Jesus. And it says in today's gospel about he being the true vine. And remain in me. Remain rooted. Rooted in the Lord. So important. Remain rooted in Jesus. And it's also interesting to note that many people, especially many converts who come into the church, what is it that brings them into the church? It is not all good programs, as good as they may be, but the main thing that brings people into the church is Eucharistic adoration, people praying before the Lord. The number one reason why people come into the church, it is through Eucharistic adoration. Reading about many of our young people who are in seminary studying for the priesthood, what was the number one thing that brought them about to think about the calling to be priests? Adoration. Eucharistic adoration. It's not programs or nice things. It is the personal encounter people have with Jesus. This year, as you know, is designated as a year of the Eucharist. Let's pray today that we can get back to a deeper appreciation of Jesus' presence in the sacrament. Let's pray that we can get back to a deeper respect for what the sacrament is all about. And most important, let's never take the Eucharist for granted. We need the Eucharist more than ever. Let's never take it for granted. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, through God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, was incarnated the Virgin Mary, and for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray as we place our various attentions before the Lord at this time. For the church that we may bear fruit when we speak out boldly in the name of Jesus, as we love one another as he commanded us to do. And while we remain in the true vine, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish and our country, that we will become ever more aware of the dignity of all human life, from conception to natural death, the beauty of God's plan for marriage, and the significance of full and authentic religious liberty. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That men boldly and courageously accept Jesus' call to religious life as a brother. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the, per- for the parishioners and the faithful throughout New Hampshire, that they may engage deeper in their faith throughout the Easter season and feel inspired by the ministries of the church in New Hampshire. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are living in fear, that they may find safety, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the, po- for the repose of the soul of David Bedard and all who have died recently, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the soul of Rick Bouchard and for all our beloved deceased, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers of this assembly and for all the prayers written in our parish book of intercessions, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We make these and all of our prayers and petitions in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. Christians, let us love one another as we share the true living bread. Jesus is our God and our brother. With his flesh and blood, we are fed. Everyone who loves is born.
Pray once again, my friends, for my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice and made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, for Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with pastoral joy, Every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by setting down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take of this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, 
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give me thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray, the partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, and all of the clergy, religious laity everywhere. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Blessed Apostles, our patron St. Patrick, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co as to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God our Father, and so therefore we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ, for the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. God's peace. Peace. God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And may the body of Christ keep me safe for everlasting life. Amen. The blood of Christ keep me safe for everlasting life. Amen. Troubles 
You sing all around, but I never hear the sound. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. How you love me. You paint the With miracles in mind, my hope will always stand. For you hold me in your hands, Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed by you. Lord, I'm amazed. Let us pray.
Gracious be, be present to your people, we pray, O Lord. And lead those who have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple of quick announcements before we leave today. Um, first of all, on Monday, April 29th at 7 o'clock in the evening, in the youth room at the school, we will be reflecting on the book, 33 Days to Eucharistic Glory. And you may want to read, the, those of you who are coming, to read the introduction before coming to it. Uh, this first Friday Mass, this Friday, May 3rd at 8 o'clock in the morning. Saturday Mass, first Saturday on May 4th at 8 o'clock as well. Uh, the spring cleanup will be held next Saturday, May 4th from 9.30 in the morning to 1 p.m. Lunch will be served. Please call the parish office to sign up. And for more information, uh, please look in the bulletin. Uh, I already uh, gave the announcement about the uh, Future of Our Faith camp, uh, campaign. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, you can see me after Mass. Those of you who have the little prayer card, why don't we just pick it up and together we can uh, pray the prayer for the success of the New Hampshire Catholic Appeal. And so let us pray. We are your people, united in our love for you and for one another. We thank you for the many gifts you have given to us, and we welcome your presence in our lives at all times. We ask that you continue to draw us closer to you and to strengthen our resolve to assist those among us who are most in need. Our diocese has many parts and one body of Christ. Through the New Hampshire Catholic Appeal, Future of Our Faith, allow us to come together to share our time, talent, and treasure with those who need our assistance. Let us grasp more fully that the help we extend to others is the most powerful expression of our gratitude to you, as well as that you went to our faith. Lord Jesus Christ, make our prayer to you, one that brings hope and charity to the future of our faith in New Hampshire. Amen. Excuse me. The Lord be with you. And may God's blessings in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit come upon all of you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And again, we turn to St. Michael, and through his intercession, we can pray together. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And to thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits who prowl throughout the world, seeking the rule of the soul. Amen. We go now in the peace of Christ, for love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great week ahead. Thank, Thank you, Father. You also. Please join us in singing the song that sends us forth, number 739, Lead Me, Lord, number 739. Blessed are the poor in spirit, longing for their Lord. For God's coming kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are the sorrowing, for they shall be consoled. And the meek shall come.